The discharge relief valve, commonly referred to as a pressure relief valve, works by taking excess water from the discharge side of the pump and putting it back into the intake. This reduces the pressure produced by the pump. If you're operating a pump with three lines flowing 100 GPM each, and two of the lines are shut down, the entire 300 GPM is then forced through the last remaining open discharge. This will result in a significant pressure rise on the last remaining open discharge because you are now forcing 300 GPM through one opening instead of three. There are two components to the pressure relief valve. The pilot valve, which is where the relief valve is controlled, and the discharge relief valve itself. The actual relief valve is mounted between the discharge side of the pump and the intake side of the pump. When the discharge pressure is lower than the set pressure, or when the pressure on both sides of the valve are equal, the valve will remain closed. When the pressure from the discharge exceeds the set pressure on the pilot valve, the valve will then slide open where the water will be reintroduced to the intake to displace incoming pressure. As the pressure decreases, the valve will then slide back closed. When looking at the pilot valve, there are several different components to discuss. First is the large T-handle. This compresses an internal spring which controls a small needle valve inside the system. This is how the pressure for the relief valve is set. As you turn the handle clockwise, you increase the tension applied to the spring, which in turn increases the pressure required to move the needle valve. As the handle is turned counterclockwise, tension is removed from the spring, thus allowing the needle valve to move more easily. As the pressure within the pilot valve increases, the pressure will eventually push the needle valve open depending on where the spring tension is set. Since there's no electronic components in the pilot valve, the pressure on the relief valve must be set while water is flowing with the relief valve in the on position. Next is the strainer. This small but critical piece is easily removable and must be inspected during routine apparatus inspection. It is composed of a metal mesh cover and a stem with two small holes in it, a cross hole which runs side to side, and the small orifice in the tip that is drilled down to connect with the cross hole. The cross hole allows water to flow through the tip of the stem. The small orifice in the tip of the strainer is how water gets to the back side of the relief valve when the valve is in the on position. If the hole in the tip of the strainer does get clogged, the relief valve will either begin to hunt or open and close, or it will become sluggish to respond and return to the closed position. It's critical to make sure that both of these holes are kept clear, and this can be done easily by running a small piece of wire through each hole. You have the on and off valve that allows you to turn the pressure relief valve on and off, and finally the indicator lights. An amber light will notify you when the relief valve is open, and the green light indicates when the relief valve is closed. Water from the pump discharge enters the pilot valve and the pressure relief valve simultaneously. When the valve is in the closed position, water bypasses the pilot valve and is directly routed to the back side of the relief valve. At the same time, water from the discharge is introduced to the front of the relief valve. With the valve off, the water pressure on both sides of the valve are equal and the relief valve will remain closed. When the switch is turned to the on position, the four-way valve reroutes water through the pilot valve. It flows through the strainer and then through the two holes on the stem. Water is channeled to the back side of the needle valve where the pressure causes the needle valve to open and close. The small orifice in the tip of the stem routes water to port two, which leads to two places. First, it pressurizes the chamber on the back side of the relief valve, which controls whether the relief valve opens or stays closed. It also leads to a small discharge port that maintains the pressure inside the pilot valve. With the pilot valve turned on, when the pump discharge pressure is at or below the pressure set on the pilot valve, the needle valve will remain closed and no additional pressure is bled off. As the pressure from the pump discharge increases, the pressure within the pilot valve also increases. Once the pressure inside the pilot valve is greater than the pressure set by the T-handle on the needle valve, the needle valve will open and any excess pressure will be bled off back to the pump intake. 
At the same time, the pressure from the pump discharge pushes against the opposite side of the relief valve. Just like the needle valve, the excess pressure will push the relief valve open and reroute the excess water into the pump intake, thereby reducing the discharge pressure from the pump to 150 PSI. To summarize, with the pilot valve on, water enters both the pilot valve and the main pressure relief valve simultaneously at the same pressure. As the pressure exceeds the pressure set by the T-handle on the needle valve, the needle valve will open, reducing the pressure inside the pilot valve, which maintains the set pressure on the back side of the pressure relief valve. At the same time, the pressure from the pump discharge activates the relief valve, and the excess pressure will also be rerouted back to the pump intake, in turn reducing the pressure on the pump discharge as shown on the gauge displayed.